Hi, everybody. Tricky the Clown here. We're going to have a great time today. I'm going to teach you some balloon animal sculpture. We're going to start with the very small, simple balloons and work our way all the way up to some of the more complicated balloons. In the next 30 minutes, if you just kind of sit along with me and watch, I think we're going to have a great time. Here's some of what we'll do. Before we begin to actually learn to make the balloons, I'd like to tell you a little bit about them. There are several different varieties of balloons that we will be using in this tape, the first of which is a 260. A 260 is designated that way because it's approximately, when, when inflated, two inches in diameter and approximately 60 inches long. We'll be using mostly these. These are what are often referred to as animal balloons. The second balloon that we will be using is called a 321. 321 is designated as that because it is approximately three inches in diameter diameter and when inflated about 21 inches long. You will notice that it is two different colors, one here and a different color on the tip, and you'll see why they do that and what we use that for later as we go through the tape. The next balloon that we will be dealing with is a six inch heart. This when blown up is approximately six inches in size and in the configuration and shape of a heart. And lastly, a really nice balloon that is great and you'll find a lot of uses for it is called a geo. This is a, about the shape of a flower. It's kind of scalloped on the outside, and it has a hole in the middle. And I'll show you these in just a bit. Next, I'd like to discuss with you a little bit about safety with balloons. Balloons are pretty strong and pretty sturdy. They don't break too easily. However, if one of them should break when you're blowing them up and it falls on the ground, make sure that you pick up after yourself. Get it up before one of the little children that you may be blowing them up for gets it into his mouth and perhaps chokes on the balloon. It is very, very important that you should do that. The next thing I want to talk about is the balloons themselves. The balloons will last much better if you keep them in a cool and dark place. Heat and light are not the friends of balloons. So if you're going to be out all day blowing up balloons, you might want to take a little cooler with some ice or one of those blue things that you freeze, put it inside, put your balloons in there so that it'll keep your balloons cool all day. They'll be just as fresh at the end of the day as they are at the beginning. These are 260s. They're approximately 2 inches in diameter and 60 inches. First thing you need to know how to do before you can enter is you need to know how to blow the balloon up. To begin with, you grasp it about one inch down from the tip and you give the balloon a good stretch. That makes it much easier to blow up. Secondly, you take the round part, the one with a hole in it, and you put it behind your lips, just inside your mouth, and you use the cheeks and the mouth air to blow about a one and a half inch to two inch bubble. Then you're going to use your diaphragm and use all the air in your lungs to sort of blow it up evenly and go the whole, the whole way to the other end. It looks something like this, and you should stretch it a little bit as you're beginning to blow. In this case, we're going to leave about a three inch tip on the other end of it, and then it's necessary to tie the balloon, otherwise you'll lose all the air. You tie the balloon off like that. Now, the first animal that you're going to learn to do is the very, very basic, very simple dog. And the concept that we want to learn here is three inches. There are approximately three inches here on the tip of the balloon, and we're going to use three inches for everything else. Now, a good gauge of that is the approximate distance from this side of your palm to this side of your palm. So if you grab the balloon like this, pinch with your index finger and your thumb, and twist the remainder of the balloon back towards you about twice, That'll give you approximately a three inch bubble. If you take that and then place that sort of here so that you're holding it, bring your hand back once again to about three inches and make a twist like that, you end up with your second bubble. That is then held by the arm and the hand right back here and you make your third three inch bubble. By bringing bubbles number two and three down and together, pinching those two together and twisting them one full turn, you end up with the head and the ears of your dog. Now the neck is the same three inches. You must hold that again against your chest. Make another three inch bubble, holding that against your chest and another three inch bubble. When you bring bubbles number five and six back together and give them one full twist, you end up with the front legs of your dog. Once again, if you do the exact same thing, a three inch bubble, another three inch bubble, and another three inch bubble, and bring bubbles eight and a nine back together, give them a twist, you end up with the hind legs of your dog. So you have the head and the ears here, your front legs and your hind legs. That's your basic dog balloon. If you want to make a second balloon out of that and make it look different, if you take the two front legs and put them down in between the two rear legs, you end up with your dog in a sitting position. If you then push them all the way through, 
bring them back forward again, you end up with your dog in a laying position. So now in approximately 30 seconds, we've learned how to do three different balloons. That's the basic dog. If you use exactly that same concept and take another balloon, in this case, I'm going to use a pump to blow the balloon up because that makes it much easier for me. We're going to be here for quite some time. There are several different varieties of those available from wherever you buy your balloons. You can get little hand pumps that you pump them up or big ones, or there are small electric pumps like I will be using here. So you'll hear kind of a funny little noise. <laughs> Once again, we're going to leave approximately three inches on the end of the balloon. We'll tie it off. Once again, do not tie your balloon knots tight. And I'll show you why later. There's some very clever things that you can do. We'll start out again with the three inches, the approximate distance, as I said, across the palm. Pinch it and roll it twice. Holding it back against your chest, you put one hand there, the second hand here. That gives you an idea of about what six inches is and you do the six inch twist like that. So now we have a three inch bubble and a six inch bubble. You'll do the same thing again to find out another six inches. That gives you two long six inch bubbles and a three inch bubble. If you bring bubbles two and three together and pinch and twist, you end up once again with the head and the face of the animal. In this case, what we're going to make is a rabbit. If you do a three inch or four inch bubble and another three inch bubble, and bring those two bubbles immediately back on themselves and twist them. That gives you the front legs of your animal. Come down approximately the same distance to here, squeezing the rest of the air out into the balloon and bringing it back around to make a loop, a simple loop like this, by now taking your front two legs and putting them down inside that loop, almost as we have done with a dog with a sitting position you now have a rabbit. I believe that you also have to decorate these. And so I use a pen called a Sharpie. There are several other varieties of pens which will work very well, but I find the Sharpie ink does not break the balloons generally. And it also makes them much more lively for the children. So if you put just eyes, a couple of dots for a nose, and a little smiling mouth on it, it just kind of adds character to your balloon and it, cre and it completes it. We're going to start the next balloon off exactly as we did the first, with approximately three inches left at the end of the balloon when you blow it up and tie it. This time we're going to learn to make a, a dachshund or a wiener dog, if you will, starting out with the exact three inch bubble that we did before. When you do the first one, you hold it against your chest. When you do the second one, again to the chest. And when you do the third one, the second and third one are brought together like that. That gives you the head of the dog. We'll do the same thing again to get the front legs with the three inch bubbles, again holding them against your chest so that they don't unwind. And when you twist those twice, that gives you the whole entire front of your dog. We will now leave a section quite long, coming back to the back about nine inches from the end, and we'll start once again doing the three inch bubbles. You bring that, those back together again and twist them, and it leaves you just a little tail and the wiener dog look. The nice part about this wiener dog is the wiener dog is somewhat convertible. If you take the head of the wiener dog and turn it around backwards, if you take the tail of the wiener dog and turn it around backwards, when you turn it up like this, it now is a giraffe. So you've learned once again to do two balloons with only one set of twists. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a guy thing. We're going to make a sword. To begin with, you blow your balloon up all the way, leaving approximately, oh, just a little tip on the end of it, just enough so that you have a little extra air in the balloon. You go back to the end that you've blown up from and take a piece about nine inches and just bend the balloon in half. It could be 10 inches. It doesn't have to be exact. And then fold it back on itself again so that you end up with almost an S twist in your balloon or an S fold. Then you will grab the center of that and squeeze it real hard all together and twist completely around one full time. When you do, you end up with like two leaves on one side and your sword in the middle or your blade in the middle and you straighten that out like that and that gives you your sword. Now to make the deluxe sword, you start once again with the same size balloon blown up all the way to the end with just a little tip at the end for the air expansion. Again, you'll start with about that nine inch balloon and bend that bubble over. You'll bend it back over on itself again, but this time you're gonna bend it one more time so that you have sort of an M twist. You bring that all together in the center, squeeze it down very tight. The balloons will take it, give it a couple of twists around like that, and then straighten out the little the three little 
leaves and your handle sticks down below like that, you end up with a deluxe sword. Now, if you want to make it really deluxe, remember at the beginning I told you don't tie your knots tight. If you put your fingers just behind the knot and gently pull, when you release it, you end up with an extra bubble on the end of your sword. There are several other things that we're going to learn today which will allow you to do exactly the same thing. I want to show you now one more thing that's kind of a guy thing. It's called a laser gun. And again, you'll start with the same size balloon, blow it all the way up, and again, leave a little tip on it. Remember the three-inch bubbles that we did before? You'll grab a hold, pinch, do a three-inch twist like that. This time, you're going to make a loop back over about four inches on a side and twist it twice. Then you'll make what is a one inch bubble and pinch and twist that. And you're going to make another loop exactly like this one, like that, and twist it twice. Now, if you take the long part of the balloon and thread it right through the two loops that you have made, pull it up, but leave a little round loop back here at the back where the boys can hold on here and here and if you straighten the barrel out on it they've got a laser gun there's some of the really easy things that you can do that are guy things the next thing we're going to learn to do is another one balloon animal this is called a parrot in a swing to begin with blow your balloon up once again leaving just a little bit of a tip on the end of it hold your finger over the knot hold it against your chest and squeeze it until the balloon fills all the way to the end that makes it a little softer and it will then handle the twists that we're going to give it to begin with you'll start on this end and you'll make a one inch bubble hold the one inch bubble in your hand and you'll make a bubble that's approximately two inches or about one, uh, one and a half inches long like this you'll double this down and you take the knot end of the balloon. Hold the knot end of the balloon in your finger and bring it down underneath the second bubble and twist it back around a couple of times. That gives you the head of the parrot. Now, this will be much easier to see when we get through. Having done that, you now bring this end of the balloon over and leave about 12 inches of it sticking out beyond where the head is and you give a twist so that that now is locked into position so that you've twisted those two sort of together. When you've done that, you bring this part of the bubble here and this part of the bubble down beside the part that you've just twisted. So you have three pieces of balloon all together and twist, grab it very tightly, squeeze it tightly and give it a complete twist. Now what you have at this point is a parrot that is upside down with his tail here and the swing this way. What you need to do is bring the parrot this way up into the, up into the swing. and so that his tail is down. There's your parrot in the swing. Like I like to do with most balloons, I then decorate the parrot by putting a pair of eyes on either side of his beak, a couple of little nostril holes, and that completes our parrot. We're going to do another bird for you right now. It's called a hummingbird, and we're going to introduce another type of balloon. This type of balloon is called a 321. Now, a 321 is called that because it's approximately three inches in diameter and blown to its fullest, it's 21 inches long. I'm gonna blow it up so that you can see it. Usually, they come in two different colors. There'll be one color on the main part of the balloon and a little different color on the tip. We'll blow it up until we have just a little bit of the end showing on the end, tie the balloon off. This will be the body of the hummingbird. We then need to take a 260. After you've tied it and you've left a little tip on it, you'll tie those two ends together, forming a complete circle. If you grab the balloon at the circle where the two ends are tied and the opposite end, and you stretch it like this, that will tell you about where the middle is. And if you bring that middle back over to it, pinch it with the other one, and then twist the balloon several times, it locks together and it gives you a figure eight. This will be the wings of our hummingbird. About three inches back from the nose of the hummingbird, if you grab the balloon and twist it, again, pinching tightly so that you can get your twist, if you put the wings, you have a hummingbird. Now, this is another one of those kind of convertible balloons in that if you do that the other way, and twist it on this end, 
leaving the point on the other end and do it, you now have gone from a hummingbird to a bumblebee. The way to decorate the bumblebee is to put two rather severe looking eyes, and I do that as a slanted direction this way, so that he looks kind of mean, a little nose on him, and then of course finishing him off by putting the lines across the back to make him look like a bumblebee. That's your bumblebee. The next thing we're going to learn to do is an apple twist. To begin with, we're going to start with our 321 again. We're going to blow it up a little bit. Not a whole lot, because you're going to have to push your finger up into it, reach down and grab it and make a twist. I'll show you what I mean. About that long. Let it off till about that big. So you've got about four or five inches across that. Tie the balloon off at the end, as we did before. You'll take your index finger and put it right into the middle and push that all the way. Then you'll take this end, the end with the little spike on it, pinch on either side of that and open your fingers out, reach all the way in and get a hold of the knot. You take your finger out of the end, give it a couple of twists and push it back in. It leaves a stem. You've got a beautiful yellow delicious apple. Obviously, if you use a red 321, it can be a red delicious apple. Using that same concept, in just a moment, I'll show you several balloons that you can make using the apple twist. But this makes a nice little something to give out to a boy or a girl, either one that's young. It's not as much for them to get into their mouth, so that it makes a good thing for the real tiny ones. We're going to learn to do another guy thing using the apple twist that we just discussed. You'll blow up the balloon first, leaving about one inch on the tip. The end where the knot is, you'll put your finger on the knot and push the knot in. Grab the whole balloon and pinch the knot through the balloon so that you have basically the same thing as your apple. Twist the balloon several times until it stays. That gives you the propeller portion of the airplane. The next thing that we'll do is the like the sword that we did. We'll fold it in half and in half again on itself like that so that you have that S twist. Grab in the middle and twist. That gives you the wings of the airplane. Now you'll come back to the end and do the same thing again. You'll make an S twist. There's your S twist. Grab that in the middle and twist one more time. And that gives you the tail section of your airplane. Now, if you want the boys to have a lot of fun with this, you add one more balloon to it. This is going to be the thing that will fly it and also the pilot if you put a face on it. Again, you'll blow it up, leaving a small tip on the end. You do exactly the same thing. You push in on the knot, grab it through the balloon, twist it several times until it stays. Then you do a three inch bubble. And remember, once again, you're using the, the approximate distance across your hand until you get the three inch bubble. Soften the bottom by just squeezing it a little bit like that. And this will go between the wings and the fuselage of the airplane and around one full time around the wing and back up to the top again. Straighten your wings out so you can fly right. Straighten the tail out and the flying stick out. And if you now put a face on the pilot, which is the little guy sticking up on the top, you've completed your airplane. And the boys can fly this, and they have an awful lot of fun with it. That's the airplane. Well, since we did a guy thing, I guess we ought to go back and do something for the ladies. This is one the ladies all really like. And we're going to introduce another balloon to you, a completely different kind of balloon. But to begin with, you'll take one of the 260s, blow it up and leave, oh, about an inch on the end of it, and tie off the other end. Here's the other balloon. This is called a heart balloon, a six inch heart balloon, and it's a real pretty balloon. Blow it up all the way. One of the other things that makes blowing these up or, or tying them easier is if you're going to have to tie two balloons together or bring it around in a loop and tie two ends together, there's really no need to tie both of these. You simply bring them together, holding the one closed, and tie the two balloons together in a knot so that the one is attached to the end of the other balloon. Now we'll make a simple, a simple loop. One, two, and three, each one about three inches long all the way around, and you end up with the top of the flower. We'll do now the very same thing we did when we did the sword. We'll fold it in half and make that M twist or S twist in the middle, grab it, 
give it one more twist, and you have a heart flower. That's only one of the things that you can do with a heart balloon. Another thing that is very much liked by the girls. If you take two heart balloons, which I have right here, blow them up, but then let a little of the air out to make them soft. About that, let just a bit out. Once again, remember, don't tie your knots tight. Leave the knot sort of loose. When you've blown up both balloons, if you hold the balloon by the big end and you put your fingers just behind the knot, remember the roll out, you stretch it out like that. When you let go and you squeeze the big part, it will now fill that area. If you grasp the balloon right there and twist, you end up with a bubble on the other end of the, two of the large part. Do the very same thing with the other one. Pull it out to the end, give it a squeeze, so, so that you now have two balloons with a little bubble on the end. When you put those two together and give them a twist, it makes a very nice little butterfly. Now, by decorating him again and putting a face on him, it becomes very easy for the boys and girls to see exactly what it is. A little sort of a zigzag down the back of him, and that's your butterfly made with two hearts. We're going to do one that we haven't done so far, and yet it's one of the most requested ones. Little boys and girls will ask all the time for the puppy, so we're going to do a real simple poodle. You start out, you leave about six inches on the end after you've blown it up, and you make that three-inch bubble that we did before. Now you make a loop, a fairly good loop with about three inches on the side, twist that well, and then you push the first bubble through and out the other side. Now what you're really doing is rolling this bubble sort of around that one, so that it rolls out on its own as it comes out the other side, and that gives you the head and the configuration for the ears above. Now, because this is a smaller dog, we're going to go to about one inch, one and a half inch bubbles to make his front legs. You do a one inch bubble for his neck, a one and a half inch bubble for, the, for one leg, another one and a half inch bubble for the other leg. Bring those two together just like we did on the other dogs. Twist it. There's the front half of our poodle. We'll go back about three inches, do a three, about a one and a half inch twist again, and a one and a half inch twist again. Bring those together. And that gives us the back legs of our poodle. We have now a little left and a little tip still on the end. If you grab that in both hands, but let just a little bit above, so that your hand covers all of this part of the balloon, and you gently squeeze, you end up with a bubble on it. Stretch it, and you end up with the poodle's tail. That's the poodle. The next thing we're going to learn to do is the mouse, which is very much like the poodle, but with a couple of different twists on it. You start leaving quite a long tail on it, maybe eight or nine inches, and you start by making that about a two inch bubble. That will be the mouse's head. But mice have great big ears, so you bend whatever you can of the balloon back around on itself and make a loop, twisting that. That'll be one ear. Do the same thing on the other side. That'll be the other ear. That gives you the head of the mouse with the great big ears on it. Now you do a one inch bubble, and a one inch bubble, and a one inch bubble, like this. Bring those two one inch bubbles together and twist them, and that gives you the front legs of the mouse. You do the very same thing with the back two, making about an inch and a half bubble for his middle, and two bubbles for his back legs and twist those off. Once again, you should always decorate the face on it because the face is what lets the boys and girls know that it's real and it adds more life to it. With this one, I just do little black dots for his eyes, two little dots for his nose, and I always put a smile on my mouse. And that's the mouse. The next thing we're going to learn to do is just as easy as the mouse, but using some completely different kinds of twists. This is the swan. Usually I make the swan with a white balloon, but you can make it with a pink balloon as well. You leave about two inches on one end. You start at the other end and you roll about a one inch bubble. 
bring that back all the way to the other end of the balloon where you have about 10 inches of balloon here and twist those two together so that you have a loop. Find the approximate center of that loop and bring it into where you twisted the other two together and twist it. So you now have sort of a figure eight with a little bubble and a long bubble on the other end. If you fold one of those bubbles in half, one of the loops in half, and push it up through the other one, you end up with the wings and the tail. The one inch bubble goes down underneath and goes between that bottom loop and that sort of forms his chest. The head comes back up and sits between the wings towards the back. That gives you that look. But now you want to have his head kind of curve as the swans do. You take this, hold it down against the rest of the bubble, just with your thumb. Now you're not gonna stretch this down, you're just gonna hold it against that other bubble. Grab it like you did the tail of the poodle so that you're holding all of it. While holding this against that balloon, you're gonna give it a squeeze and when you do, a miracle happens, look. And when you let go, there's the neck of your swan with just a little left for the beak. A little practice and you'll get that down perfectly. You now decorate it by putting a pair of eyes on him. And there's your swan. The next thing we're gonna learn is not only a new balloon, but we're gonna learn a completely new twist. We're gonna start out, this will be a snail. We'll start out leaving about one inch on the end of the balloon. You'll come to the opposite end where the nipple of it is, the part you blow it up, and you'll make a three inch bubble, okay? Then you'll squeeze sort of to make it a little softer here and you make a one inch bubble. We then do what is called an ear twist. Now what an ear twist is, is we will bring the three inch bubble back with the rest of the balloon and hold those together, grab the one inch bubble, pull it somewhat up from the rest and twist the entire bubble around once. That gives you a look like that. That's called an ear twist and we're gonna use that in several of the balloons today. When you've done that, you make another one inch bubble, making the balloon somewhat soft. Again, you bring these two back, grab the entire bubble, pull it up, and twist it back around. So that you have two ear twists side by side. Now once you've learned to do that, remember that because the last balloon that we're gonna do is the rocking horse and we will use the same basic configuration for the rocking horse's head as we have for the snail. Having done the ears or the, the, this part of the snail, you make a large loop about eight or nine inches across this way, bring it back to where the two ear twists are and twist a loop into it so that you have this kind of a loop. Go to the other end, make sure that you're sque squeezed clear out to the end and that the balloon is full, and then merely roll the balloon all the way back on itself so that you have a spiral. Bring the loop over and push the spiral part way down into your loop. Turn the sort of feet and the head back up. Now, if you will recall, we talked about earlier rolling the knot out. If you put your fingers right behind the knot and stretch it, you roll out, you end up with a head. There's one other thing that you can do with this that really makes it look like a snail, and that is if you take another balloon, you'll do what is called stressing the balloon. And to do that, you find the approximate center of the balloon here and really stretch that part of the balloon without stretching the rest of the balloon so that it's gonna be weaker here than it is on either end holding as much of it as you can, put it into your mouth and give it a gentle stretch, stretch as you blow. When you do, the balloon should blow up in the middle and you want about a one inch bubble. Like that. When you do that, tie the balloon off. That leaves you a one inch bubble approximately in the middle, a little longer than one inch, about one and a half this one is. Find the center of that and make two small bubbles with two antennas sticking out. Bring it back, wrap it around the head, and give it a couple of twists. Straighten your antennas out so that they point up. When you put a face on him, he's really adorable, and all the boys and girls just love him. Couple eyes, couple dots for the mouth, nose, 
and his mouth, and that's your snail. The next thing we're going to do is the caterpillar. We'll start out with the balloon very much like we did with the laser gun, leaving just a little bit here on the end, except instead of making a three-inch bubble to begin, we're going to make a one-inch bubble. Make the loop exactly as we did with the laser gun, twist the loop off, make a one-inch bubble, and twist the loop again, make a third bubble and another loop, Take the long part of the balloon here, and you're going to push that back through all three of the loops. Once that comes out the other end, take this very first bubble and tuck it gently back in underneath your first loop. Now, this is going to be the head, and remember what we did where we stressed the balloon for the snail. And we made the little two bubbles, or a little bubble in the center of the balloon. You stress it out once again, blow it up. So you've got about a one and a half inch bubble. Tie it off, find the center, twist about a one inch bubble here, twist the antenna around it, straighten your antenna up. And now you put the face on him, and you've got your caterpillar. Once again, I do a very simple face. I just do little round eyes, two dots for his nose, and a great big smile. And that's your caterpillar. The next thing we're going to learn to do is a teddy bear. Actually, we're going to learn to do two versions of the teddy bear. The first is what I give to the little boys and girls, again, that are in mom's arms because it's a little difficult for them to turn around and get it into their mouth. You'll start out with a balloon that's got about a five, five and a half inch tail on it. And you start at the other end and you do a one inch bubble. After you do the one inch bubble, you do a second one inch bubble. Hold that against your chest as you have before in the past and do a two inch bubble followed by a one-inch bubble. Now, this is going to seem like a lot of bubbles, but we're getting a little more complicated. Then you're going to do a one-and-a-half-inch bubble, followed by a one-inch bubble, and finally a two-inch bubble, so that you end up with a whole string of bubbles like this. You now take the end of the second bubble and the end of the last bubble and bring those together and give it a twist. If you lose your first bubble, it's okay because you can redo the first bubble and you stick it through the hole. If you'll recall, a while back we did the ear twist where you took the two balloons and held them together. We're going to do that with the side and the top of the head and take the one inch bubble lifting up slightly and give it a full twist and that gives you one ear. You go to the other side, lift up and give it a full twist. That gives you the other ear. That gives you the head for your teddy bear. If you'll remember back when we did the first sword where we did the S twist, you now do an S twist. That gives you his two upper arms. And with what is left of the balloon, you do another S twist. That gives you his bottom feet and, of course, a little tail on the back. Once again, you decorate it up for the little boys and girls. I like to put round eyes on the ones that I give to the, boy, to the little ones like this because they look like teddy bear buttons and a big smile on him. And that's teddy bear number one. The other teddy bear I make usually for the somewhat older people, uh, older girls I should say, and that's done exactly the same way for the head. You start with the one inch bubble and another one inch bubble, then the one and a half to two inch bubble, one inch bubble, one and a half inch bubble, one inch bubble, the one and a half to two inch bubble, bring those two together, twist them, that gives you that configuration, and you do the head. The second part of the body is much easier on this one than it is on the first one because you're only going to make two loops. You come down about one inch and form a fairly sizable loop. Then take the rest of the balloon and make your second loop leaving the tail out to the end like that so that you have a large loop on the top and a small loop on the bottom. Then you take one of the heart balloons that we talked about before, blow it up pretty good, let a little of the air out. Don't tie the knot tight because again we're going to roll the knot. Give it that squeeze so that it has that little extra sticking down. Now you can place that into the hole that you've made with the top balloon, turn his head around, straighten out his legs, 
put his face on it, and you have a Care Bear or a heart, a, care, a bear holding a heart. These I change the eyes on a little bit. I make them sort of elongated with the lid and the eyeball, and once again, I put the big smile on him. And that's what we give to the young ladies. That's your Care Bear. Next, we're going to learn to do a couple of balloons that are not really too complicated, but they look as though they're very complicated to your audience. The first is a flower, and the second is a clown. Both use two of the balloons that are the same. One uses a third balloon. To begin with, start for your flower. You're going to blow it up and leave about a one-inch tip on it. Having done that, we're going to go to a new balloon that we haven't even talked about yet. This balloon is called a geo. A six inch geo, it's sort of scalloped all the way around with a hole through the middle of it. And this makes a very nice flower. They are a little difficult to blow up. But they make a very interesting shape. Let a little of the air out of it, stretch it, tie your knot. That leaves the hole in the middle. Now, in order for you to push this through and make a ball on the other end of it, you have to first start by making about a one and a half inch bubble here. Then you push the end through the balloon, through the, through the geo, and get a hold of it and kind of stretch it as you squeeze the balloon back here. And then it pops out into a bubble on the front of your flower. Release the other end and untwist it. And if you recall, you'll come back to about midway on your balloon. If you'll recall, we did the sword twist. If we do the sword twist there, that will give you the leaves or the petal, the, the leaves of the flower on the stem. Come right behind the flower, pull it out a little bit, do a one inch bubble. And now remember the ear twist where you will take the bubble, pull the bubble up and give it one twist. That turns the flower at sort of a right angle so it looks much better. Now that's our flower. We're going to use these two balloons, or two balloons just like these, and a 321, and I'm going to show you a really neat clown. For your clown, the bottom part of your clown, and we're going to use all the same bubbles that we've used so far, you want to start by leaving about a half an inch tip on the end of it, then putting your finger over the knot at the other end, and again squeezing it out all the way to the end. Start by making this end stick a little bit past the knot, and find the approximate center of the balloon. Then move about one inch over from that towards the knot end of the balloon, and you're going to make a one inch bubble. You'll make another one inch bubble right beside that. So in the middle of your balloon, you have two bubbles. Bring the two long ends back together and about five inches back, pinch and twist them together so that you have something that almost looks like the teddy bear's head without the bubble in between. Take the two long balloons and push them down, or the two long ends of the balloon, push them down through the loop that you have made, straighten them out slightly. You will notice that the knot end is slightly shorter still than the other. If you roll that end of the balloon, they become approximately the same length. What we will do now, this will become the body of the clown, these being his hands, these being his legs. We're now going to put feet on the clown. So you take about one and a half inches of one of the legs and make a one and a half inch bubble and a one inch bubble behind it. Put those two together like that. Grab it and do an ear twist. That gives you one foot on the clown. Duplicate that on the other leg, because he's got to have two feet. That gives you the body of the clown. You'll now take the geo, and if you don't want to use a geo like this, you could actually do it by making a series of bubbles and breaking off the end, enough to go around to make the collar for the clown. I like the geo because it's more colorful, and it makes the clown look different, and it's something that the people have not seen before, or most people have not. That becomes his collar, and now you take your 321, Make it fairly long, tie it off. There's no exact length that this needs to be because the size of the head is really up to you. You now do an apple twist on the top by once again putting your finger on the knot, pushing it in, getting a hold through. And just like you did on the airplane and when we made the apple twist, you do that. That gives sort of like a hat on it. You take this end, push it through the collar, and now put the tip end through the, between, the, between the arms and the back, 
and just roll it around a couple times like that to tie it into place. And that leaves you with the head, the collar, and the body. To have him stand straighter, grasp him here and just bend his legs. That gives him more of a straight look. When you decorate him, my decorations for him are basically clown eyes. By that, I, all I do is make a big tall loop, draw a line across the bottom, and put an eyeball in it. Do one next to it. I always make mine a little cross-eyed. It makes him look a little sillier. And then you put the mouth on him with a smile. I then, if I have time, will draw three lines on each of his hands, because cartoon characters only have three fingers, not four. I do two X's on each of his feet to make the laces, and that's your clown. Really not a complicated balloon if you've studied the beginning of the tape and you've learned the basic twists. The next thing we're going to learn to do are several different hats. The first of which is a heart hat, and you start out by blowing the balloon up and leaving approximately one inch on the end. Then you take one of the heart balloons, blow it up as we did with the heart flower, and tie it onto the end of the balloon. Now you'll need for the balloon to be rather soft at this point, and the reason you do is because you're going to make it twist pretty hard. So you push some air out into that, but just leave a little bit left, bring it back around and tie it onto the tail end of the heart, that last little piece that was there. This hat also becomes very adjustable. Make it soft, make a loop, take the remaining balloon and sort of push it the end of it through that loop. So it's like a loop through a loop. It just is pushed through, and that you can either push in or pull back in order to adjust the size. Go to the other side of the heart and do exactly the same thing. up to the top, and there's your crown. Little girls just absolutely love this. If you want to do something with a flower, you can do exactly the same thing. You start out once again with the balloon, leaving about a one, one and a half inch tip on the end of the balloon. Then you take a geo, one of your little ones with a hole in the middle. one and a half inch twist, push it through the center, pull out on it, squeeze it from the back side until it fills on the outside, let go of it. Then you'll go to the child, whoever it is, you'll measure around their head, making a one inch bubble here, measure it around their head so that it's the approximate size and it's going to fit comfortably for the child. Leave the bubble at the bottom, bring the flower to the top. If you then pull back on the flower like that and do that one inch bubble that we were talking about earlier behind the flower and give it a twist. There's the flower hat and it's another one that everybody seems to like. The last hat that we're going to learn is what I call the crown. It requires three balloons blown up all but oh just a little tiny bit at the very end of the balloon. You take the three balloons and you put them together just like this and twist all three together so that you have three little bubbles on the end. The next thing you do looks kind of strange. You put it down between your knees and hold on tightly with your knees and then simply twist the balloons together in a spiral all the way up to the end and leave like that at the end so that you've got sort of one long one and two short ones. Then bring those all the way back around with the other ends and twist all six of them together. When you've done that, if you put the long one in the middle, get all the air into the end ones, we'll put the short one in the middle. All the air into the other ones, that gives you the crown. Sort of a cute one for the kids. If you use a little imagination and you turn it in this direction, at Christmas time you can make a candle and put a candle in here. Uh, for the ladies, you can also take one of the little six inch hearts and put a six inch heart in there. It gives you sort of a couple more ideas that you can use. That's basically the crown, the third of the hats. A one balloon, one twist butterfly. To do that, you take the end with the knot in it and cross about one and a half inches over about a four inch end of the other and twist the balloon together at that point as you bring the other one up to the center. It goes all together at one time. It gives you the wings. It gives you the head. 
it gives you the tail, all in one twist. When you put the eyes on it, and a little smile, and a couple of lines across the back of it, you could even pass this off as a dragonfly if you ever happen to get asked for one. I thought it was real cute. I hope you'll think it's cute, too. That's the one balloon, one twist butterfly. The last balloon that we're going to learn is kind of my signature piece. It's a rocking horse. A friend of mine said he couldn't figure it out. I sat down and figured it out, and I've been doing it ever since. I hope you'll like it. You start with about a two-inch end on the end of your balloon, and we're going to begin just as we did when we made our snail. You start with a three-inch balloon or bubble, followed by a one-inch bubble, which you then grab an ear twist. You do another one-inch bubble and another ear twist. That gives you the head of the horse. Then you do the neck, which is probably about five inches long, and you do a loop, again about a five inch loop. Back a ways, bring the other end up, and do another five inch loop. That's the basic body for your horse. The next balloon that you will do is going to be the mane on the horse. It makes no difference how much end is on it because all you're going to do is make a series of eight one inch bubbles. There's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you have a chain of eight bubbles. Bring the first bubble around to the end and tie it right where the two bubbles come together. Then you'll do something that will take a little bit of practice and something that you will have to learn to do. It's not real easy. You twist off about one and a half inch, put your thumb into the balloon, stretch, and pull and the balloon breaks apart. This piece you'll save because you're going to use it for something in just a moment. This you find the middle of your ring of bubbles so that you have four on each side and you slide those over the ears, under them, and back together again at the back of the neck, like that. Go to the center between two and two and take four and four and twist them so that they stay together. Take that little tip that you cut off or pulled off and simply wrap it around the junction of the neck and the front legs. That gives you the horse's mane. The next balloon that we will use will be for the rocker. This you blow up almost to the end, leaving just enough of a tip that you can tie the thing into a circle. Put it together, twist off about three inches, and you will push the, that three inch double bubble between or through the loop of the rear legs, find the approximate center of it, and push it all the way down so that that bubble now is on the outside of the two rear legs. The remainder of the bubble is in the front. Grab that so it's folded in half, and you can find the center and make approximately the same bubble on the opposite end that you did back here at the tail. That will push through the loop at the front, and again, you will find the center and push that down so that this is now through and sticks out on the center. If we straighten our horse's head around like that, you put your finger behind the knot at his nose, you can roll the knot out once again and it gives it more of a horse look. If you'll recall a moment ago, we broke off a part of a balloon and I put that in my pocket. That you simply roll around into a loop, tie it, so that you have a ring, and when you place that down over your rocking horse's head, that becomes his harness. Finish off by making round eyes with eyeballs and eyelashes, a little round dot for his nose, and there's your rocking horse. I've enjoyed making this tape for you. I hope you've learned a lot about balloons, and I hope I get an opportunity to see you again. In the meantime, blow them up, have a ball.